Imagine you're a developer building a DeFi application and you want a user, let's say her name is Alice, to move USDC between blockchain A and blockchain B seamlessly. Traditionally, Alice would rely on third-party bridges that either lock a USDC in a smart contract or require liquidity pool to facilitate the swap. These methods can be slow, introduce extra risk, and complicate the process. But cross-chain transfer protocol, also known as CCTP that is developed by Seku, solves this by letting Alice burn USDC on blockchain A and meet the same amount on blockchain B all natively. So this makes transfers more efficient by reducing liquidity fragmentation and it eliminates unnecessary risk. My name is Blessing ADCG and I'm a developer relations manager at Circle. In this video, I'll show you how to integrate CCTP v2 into your application, making USDC transfers between blockchains smooth and efficient. We're going to talk about how CCTP works, step through the integration process, and we're going to discuss some use cases. By the end of this video, you have a clear understanding for enabling seamless cross-chain USDC transfers in your application. As a developer, you want Alice to have a smooth experience when moving USDC across blockchains. With CCTP, you can integrate what is called a burn and mint mechanism directly into your application, and this ensures USDC transfers happen securely and efficiently. It presents a world where you no longer have to rely on wrapped tokens or experience liquidity fragmentation or even rely on external custodians, as CCTP enables a capital efficient and gives you a secure solution for cross-chain transfers. I'm happy to tell you that CCTP is now available in two distinct versions. One, CCTP version one, which introduced secure cross-chain USDC transfers with what is called standard finality speeds. If you are not familiar with finality, this is the point at which a blockchain transaction is considered irreversible and fully confirmed on the source chain, which is blockchain A in the example we used. And CCTP also presents another version known as CCTP version 2, which we've just released. And CCTP version 2 builds upon CCTP version 1 infrastructure with standard finality transfer speeds, but also offers fast transfers and hooks, which are new features presented in CCTP version 2. I want you to think of CCTP version 2 as an upgrade, which offers everything CCTP version 1 does while introducing faster than finality transactions with settlement in seconds. And it also introduces automation capabilities, which makes cross-chain USDC movement even more smoother for both developers and users. As a developer, when you're integrating CCTP version 2, you can present users like Alice with two transfer options. The first one is standard transfer, which is free. And the second one is fast transfer, which comes at a fee because it offers near instant liquidity. So regardless of any transfer method that you have in your application, CCTP ensures that you have native, efficient, and trust-reduced asset transfers. So it gives you as a developer the option of deciding which transfer methods best fits your application's needs, or you can simply offer both for flexibility. So let's talk about the key differences between CCTP version 1 and CCTP version 2. So CCTP version 1 was launched in April 26, 2023, and CCTP version 2 was just recently launched. Let's talk about transfer speeds. CCTP version 1 takes 13 minutes to make transfers from Ethereum and its layer 2 solution. And takes approximately 13 minutes also on CCTP version 2 because of standard transfer that we talked about. But when you are considering fast transfers, it takes approximately 45 seconds. Let's talk about the supported blockchains where you can have CCTP version 1. CCTP version 1 is supported on Aptos, Arbitrum, Avalanche, Base, Ethereum, Nobu, Optimism Mainnet, Polygon POS, Solana, Sui, and Unichain. For CCTP version 2, it's available on Avalanche, Base, Ethereum, with more chains to be added. Let's talk about the user experience. For CCTP version 1, it presents a standard cross-chain transfer user experience. 
but with CCTP version 2, it presents an improved fast transfer user experience and also ability to add hooks into your application. The pricing for CCTP version 1 is free, while the pricing for CCTP version 2 is free when you're considering standard transfer, but it has an on-chain fee attached to it when you're looking at fast transfer. So free for standard, on-chain fee for fast transfer. Now that we've examined the difference between CCTP version 1 and CCTP version 2, let's talk about how CCTP version 2 fast transfer works. So at its core, CCTP version 2 follows the same fundamental process as CCTP version 1, where we have USDC being burnt on one chain and it's being minted on another chain. We have a lot of videos on this concept on our YouTube channel, so be sure to check other videos and also subscribe to the channel. The difference, however, lies in how quickly a user like Alice is able to send our funds and how developers implement the transaction into the application. For example, if Alice is not in a hurry for a transaction to finalize on the source chain, she can take the standard transfer route. But if she needs her funds to arrive almost instantly, she can go with the fast transfer route in CCTP version 2. Now, let's break it down from a developer's perspective so you can understand how CCTP version 1 works compared to CCTP version 2 and how you can integrate it into your application. So let's start with the standard transfer, which I said is available in CCTP version 1 and CCTP version 2. So here's how it works. First, your application initiates the transfer when Ali specifies the recipient wallet on the blockchain B. Then, USDC is bound on blockchain A, after which Circus attestation service closely observes the bond event and waits for a add finality, which I said is approximately 13 minutes on EVM supported chains. So after the bond event, a signed attestation is issued, and this ensures that the transaction is irreversible. And finally, your application mints the exact amount of USDC on blockchain B using the retrieved attestation. This method is ideal for large transactions, settlement, or cases where Alice or other users that you have on your application don't mind waiting for the source chain finality. Now, let's talk about fast transfer, which I said is available in CCTP version 2 only. And this offers near instant and efficient transfers. So if your user needs near instant liquidity, you as a developer can consider integrating fast transfers. And here's how it works. First, your application initiates a fast transfer when a user like Alice requests it, specifying the recipient wallet address on blockchain B. Then USDC is bound on blockchain A and Seku quickly attests to the bond event after soft finality, which is just in seconds. And this skips the need to wait for the full finality compared to the standard transfer. And after this, Seku's fast transfer allowance backs the transaction, allowing USDC to be minted on blockchain B before the add finality is reached on the source chain. And this makes Alice recipient, which is sending the funds to, get the USDC almost instantly, but a fee is applied for using fast transfer. And finally, once the finality catches up, Circle replenishes its allowance, ensuring the system is stable. So as a developer, when you're integrating fast transfer into your application, it enables near instant transactions and this use case is perfect for traders, liquidity providers, and users who need fast cross-chain transactions in cases such as retail purchases where they don't want to experience any delay. Now, let's consider improved compatibility with hooks. So CCTP version 2 introduces hooks, which enables developers to automate actions triggered by a cross-chain USDC transfer. By integrating hooks into your application, you can improve the user experience and you can streamline complexity workflows. Here are some practical use cases where you can consider using hooks in your application. 
we are building an application that needs to auto convert USDC for gas fees. You can automatically swap a portion of the transfer USDC into the destination chain native token to cover for these gas fees. And this enables seamless user transactions. Another use case is an auto transfer collateral for margin trading. This is where you instantly move USDC to margin account upon execution of a perpetual trade, which are uh, optimizing collateral management in trading platforms. Another use case is yield optimization in decentralized finance. This is where you automatically deposit USDC into the highest yield lending protocol based on some predefined APY thresholds, helping users maximize their returns. And finally, you can consider using OOKs for batch payments. This is where you send USDC to multiple recipients in a single transaction, which simplify use cases like payroll, airdrops, or supplier payment across different chains. So you can see that by leveraging OOKs, you as a developer can automate critical steps in cross-chain transactions, and this reduces friction and also unlocks new possibilities for decentralized finance activities such as trading and digital commerce. All right, welcome to the demo, and I'll be showing you how CCTP V2 works. So the first thing you want to do is, in the description below, there's a link to this sample application. You want to click on the link and you want to fork this repository. And how you do that is you click on this uh, purple button on the left side and you remix the app. That would make the application available in your Repolit workspace and you can also download it locally and test it out on your local machine. So this is the sample application and it works by showing how CCTP v2 works where we can send USDC from a source chain to a destination chain and you can also use the uh, standard transfers as well so you can see how they work in comparison so i'll test it out with the cctp v2 but before i do that let me show you how to set it up in your workspace either locally or in your repolit workspace so to do that i'll just navigate to the application i have it running in my repolit workspace so i can either choose to run it right here or run it locally to run it locally, I can click on these three dots on the top left corner and I can download as a zip folder. Downloading this as a zip folder will save a copy of this repository to my local machine, uh, my laptop, uh, and I can choose to run it in any IDE. So right now I'm running it in Repolit with this button, right? But the first thing you want to do is you want to configure the secret. To configure the secret, uh, you need to add your wallet private key to the secret and that would give the application access to connect to your wallet where you have USDC stored in the source chain and the destination chain. So to do this, you can click on this button on the left corner and you can look for secret. You can search and you can search for secret, right? Secret lets you store sensitive information like API keys securely in your application without exposing it to any vulnerability risk. So we really recommend that you use Secret if you are working in Repolit or you use .env.local if you are working in your local machine. So I'm using Secret and to do this, I'll save the key, which is the next public key variable. I'll put this as shown and then I'll put the actual value of my private key right here. If you don't know how to get your private key from Metamask, for example, we'll have a link in the description that talks through how to uh, get your private key from MetaMask because I was using MetaMask for this example. So uh, in the code, we have my secret stored as an environment variable, and this is how we're accessing it. You can take your time to read through the code after you've cloned it. But for the purpose of this video, I'll just show you how to set it up, show you how CCTP v2 works, and you can take the code and integrate it into your application. So. Uh, right now, the setup is all done on my end because I have the secret stored securely. Then I can proceed to testing it out. So this is my URL for demo and I've opened it right here, right? So uh, I can work with this transfer type. So let's test out V2. And the expectation is that CCTP V2 is supposed to send USDC from Ethereum Sepolia and I'm going to use base Sepolia as the destination chain in a couple of seconds. So let's see how that works. So I'll click on, I'll just put one USDC. So I'm sending one USDC from Ethereum to 
base sepolia. So I'll click on start transfer and that will start the process of sending one USDC from the source chain to the destination chain. We've already covered all these steps in this video so you understand what approval means, what bond means, and what attestation is. And the final step is minting. And you can see how everything happens in real time in the logs. So we went through approve, approving USDC transfer, right? That's done and this is the transaction hash, which you can of course monitor. So once you copy this, you can click and say, okay, you go to Tenderly, which is a dashboard blockchain explorer to monitor transactions. And you can put in this transaction hash there just to see how that works. So we have a successful status on Sepulia, meaning uh, we've been able to approve uh, the bond event on the soft chain. So you can see uh, the, the gas price, gas used and everything, the blockchain uh, index and nonce. So you can see all the information. So let's go back to the sample application, right? You see this happened in 31 seconds. Speaking to the power of CCTP V2, it's fast. <laughs> so uh, so we have uh, USDC on base, Sepolia already, and it's that fast, right? So you can also check the bond transaction hash same way we did in Tenderly, right? You put that in there and you see success. So my... Uh, USDC is already in my base Sepulia wallet. So that's how CCTP V2 works to move USDC securely and fast from a source chain. In this demo, we, work, we worked with Ethereum Sepulia to a destination chain base Sepulia. And you can also check out the standard transfer. Of course, this will take a couple of minutes. I've already showed you in the comparison table how they work side by side. And you can clone this repository. We actually really recommend that you clone it. And how you clone it is by clicking on this button and the link is in the description. So I hope by now you understand how CCTP V2 works in real time with this sample application, which we recommend again that you clone. And let's go back to the main tutorial. So with fast transfers and hooks in CCTP version two, developers can further improve cross-chain interactions and they can deliver instant, low cost, and seamless blockchain experiences to all users, including Alice. We're not forgetting Alice, by the way. <laughs> so you can get started building today by visiting developers.seku.com. My name is Blessing, and I'll see you in the next one.